it's Jim from JetsonHacks.com. Today we are going to discuss motor and steering servo control. After that we'll talk a little bit about the battery that drives the electronic components. If you remember back in episode 3 we talked about using a PWM driver to control the steering servo and the motor electronic speed controller on the race car. We used a dedicated PWM driver, this little PCA9685, and experimented with appropriate values to control the steering and drive the motor. This Jetson race car is derived from the MIT race car. There is another race car derived from the MIT one, which is the University of Pennsylvania F1 10th race car. Both those cars use two different methods to control the steering servo and drive the motor. Let me take the bottom platform off and we can take a look at the stock ESC and steering servo. In the stock setup, there's basically three components. Here's the steering servo, this is the receiver, and this is the ESC. You talk to the steering servo using these wires. You talk to the electronic speed controller using these servo wires. And in a stock configuration, both of these plug into the receiver, which receives signals from an external RC controller through this little antenna. The UPenn car uses a microcontroller to send PWM pulses to the steering servo and the Traxxas stock ESC. The microcontroller uses a Teensy 3.2, which can be programmed using Arduino software. So here's what one looks like. You get it in this little bag. There's a nice little card to tell you what the signals are. And you get this little chip, little board. So here's the board. This particular one, I ordered it with the pins already soldered on. So it has a couple of PWM pins on it has this little USB interface, micro USB interface. So in this particular approach, there are several advantages. One is that the board itself is about $20, so it's relatively inexpensive. It's easy to wire up. There are a couple of PWM signals that come off the board. You basically wire those up to the ESC and the steering servo. And the other advantage to this approach is that it's basically an Arduino type of programming environment. This particular microcontroller can be programmed as a ROS node. We will be able to communicate with it through this USB port from the Jetson using a ROS serial package. The drawback of this particular approach is that it uses the stock ESC. And as we discussed in episode three, this particular ESC has a minimum of speed that it can travel at, which is around seven miles an hour. The MIT race car uses a different method to control the motor. It replaces the stock ESC with a better electronic speed controller or a VESC. This is what the VESC looks like. Basically, there's a servo controller this goes to the batteries, this goes to the motor, this is the USB controller. This particular VESC was around $175, I recall. It's a relatively low volume part. You'll see it for from $125 to a couple hundred dollars. But there is a lead time to acquire one if you don't build it yourself. But it has two important advantages. First, you can program the ESC firmware, which gives you the capability of being able to control the motor speed more precisely. In our case, we can make the car easier to drive at slower speeds. 
And the second advantage is that the vest can monitor the motor speed, which in turn allows us to derive some crude odometry. Uh, so the odometry is crucial in building environmental maps. Typically robots place some type of encoders on the wheels or the drive shafts to get odometry. In the VESC case, you can tell how fast the motor is turning and do a derived calculation from there. Now, obviously this won't be as dead on accurate as having an encoder on each wheel to measure things like slippage and so on. But on the other hand, it's probably close enough. MIT has reported good results using this method. Plus, if you price encoders, you know that $150 is a bargain to get some type of odometry into the car. So we talked about using the onboard battery to drive the motor and the steering servo, and then using an extra battery up top here to drive the electronics. A little one like this, or a larger one, depending on how long we want the car to run. Both the MIT race car and the UPenn F110 car use the same battery, this Energizer battery. It's 18 amp hours, so it's pretty hefty. But the interesting thing about it is that it has three different outputs. So you can see the five volt USB. It also has a 16 to 20 volt DC output and a nine to 12 volt DC output. So you get three different voltages out of this particular battery. The other nice thing about it is it does balanced charging. So basically you just plug it into the wall ward and it worries about charging itself. You don't really have to monitor like you do a regular LiPo. It's around $125. So I think the thing that makes sense at this point is not to use the PCA9685. There's no reason to duplicate what basically UPenn is doing better with a microcontroller. So we'll get rid of this. We'll use the Teensy 3.2 as our first step. But eventually I think we will want to go to the VESC just so we can get odometry out of the car. It's the same thing with the battery. This battery is pretty easy to mount and it's easy to recharge. So you don't have the same safety issues that you do with a regular LiPo battery. So I'm inclined to go towards this as part of the project. As you can see, we're gonna to have to rearrange our deck a little bit here. So the next step is basically to integrate the Teensy microcontroller to control the steering and the ESC and load up some ROS software so that we can get this little pig rolling. Mm -hmm.